Thank you for watching, commenting, and asking questions. Here are some of your most frequently asked questions, and I'm pleased to be joined by Dr. Russell Osgathorpe, doTERRA's Chief Medical Officer and a board-certified pediatric infectious diseases specialist. Dr. O, thank you for being here. Good to be here. So, first question, if we are able to flatten the curve in the next few weeks, and then everyone starts getting together again, won't that just set us up for another huge spike in cases? And the sub part of that is, eh, if we're all gonna get it anyway, why not get it now and get it over with? Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll try and answer this question the best I can. First question is, if we're able to flatten the curve, um, and then we relax our public health measures, won't we see viral outbreak again? And my answer to that question is, is I personally believe that that will be the case. I believe that with this virus, much like other respiratory viruses, we're gonna see a significant percentage of the population catch the virus, get over the virus, and then we respond in a public health way, socially distancing and physically distancing ourselves from everyone else, and we see the curve flatten and we feel like we're getting better and then we relax all of those things. And then the virus will likely start circulating again because it never truly went away out of the population. Right. It's just circulating at lower level. So I believe that what the next year will likely look like is multiple isolated, um, for lack of a better term, outbreaks of illness within certain countries or states or areas of the world. And it, they will come and go over time because of a number of different factors. Um, what we're doing with schools, what we're doing with churches, social distancing, isolating people one from another will all play into a role as well as what percentage of the population has contacted the virus and gotten over it. So what percentage of the population is now immune? because the more of us that get immune, the harder it is to spread. And so what we should see is a big spike of illness and then subsequent smaller spikes of illness as time goes on until most of us have seen this infection and it stops circulating, which might take a year or more. And, and to be clear, and, and to the second part of this question, which is when you say that the bigger spike, we're still hoping to keep that bigger spike yeah. up. Yeah, we don't want to be a Mount no. Everest spike. No, that's why that's... people can't get it now, even though they may well get it eight months from now. Mm -hmm. And that's the second part of your question, which was, if everybody's going to get this, why don't we all just get it over with? Yeah. Um, and that goes back to some of what we were talking about in our very earlier episodes, very early episodes, when we said that we want to flatten that curve to give our hospitals a chance to care for those among us that will need intensive care. If we all got it, if we all just stop socially distancing, if we all just got together and went on as life as usual, we would see tremendous burden hit our hospitals. And people would die that would otherwise not die if ventilators and ICU beds were available. Yeah. So the reason why we're doing this is we want to spread it out over time. The next question is, if smoking and vaping are making us more susceptible and vulnerable to respiratory diseases, not my mm -hmm. words, but the, the questioner, why aren't we talking more about the need to stop smoking and vaping? Okay. In the medical community, we've done a, as good a job as we can over the last 20 years at trying to educate all of our countries about the harmful effects of smoking. Vaping is a little bit newer, but we have come out strongly against that as well. Anything that harms your lungs, irritates them, could potentially make COVID-19 worse. Yeah. So one of the risk factors for severe disease or being admitted to a hospital or needing an ICU is chronic lung disease. And we know that smoking and lung irritation caused by vaping can cause chronic lung disease. So we should definitely avoid those things um, keeping our lungs as healthy as we can. And uh, if someone tests positive for COVID-19, what is the likelihood that, that she will need inpatient care, need to be hospitalized? Okay, so from a database perspective, if you look at the Wuhan outbreak, what happened, this is where some of the data comes from about age. We learned that most of the patients that were being admitted to hospital were over 65. And in that age group, roughly 30% or so of those in early 
reports out of China suggested that up to 30% of people over 65 needed hospital care who got COVID. But we really don't know the true denominator, right? right? And we're seeing a little initial evolution of that yeah. in, in Italy and now we are. Spain and even the United States. We are. We're learning more and more and more as the outbreak in specific countries goes on and we get better and better clarity right. around these types of questions. But in effect, what I would say is, is that if you were 85 years old with chronic lung disease and diabetes, you are, in, you are at very increased risk if you were to catch COVID of needing hospital care. Um, and the, uh, to put a number on that, I think we would say like a third of those sorts of people would need care. And many of those would go on to need ICU-based care. The final question um, asks about immunity and COVID-19. Sure. Uh -huh. We are seeing people recover. Yep. Uh, and the question then is, how long does that immunity last? Okay, so with any viral disease uh, that you get, your immune system tries to respond, and it is either successful in responding or not successful in responding. Um, with COVID-19, we are seeing successful response. Many people are recovering from this illness, the, the vast, vast majority of them, right? Many of them have asymptomatic illness right. and get better. So we know that our immune system responds to the virus and controls the virus. The question we don't know yet is for how long that control is good for. Yeah. So we don't know how long immunity lasts. We know that we create antibody to it. We know that we create cellular immunity to it, but we don't know how long the, that will last. So will there be potential for reinfection with COVID-19? It's possible and only time will tell. We'll know later. Um, year or two from now about reinfection rates with COVID and whether that occurs or not. We're hopeful that it's similar to other coronaviruses, which is when you get them, you're immune. Thank you, Dr. O, and thank you for joining us.